Good morning, Hope Church. Welcome to another Hope Daily Devotional. Uh, I hope you guys have had a really good weekend. I've hopefully had a rest, uh, spent some time uh, with the Lord, and maybe with other brothers and sisters in Christ at church or another gathering. Um, and, and hopefully that's helped you to be ready uh, to start at this week. And I hope this morning as we look at scripture together, that, that would also just to help you as uh, we all start uh, our weeks. So let me pray and then we're going to look uh, at uh, Mark chapter 2 uh, verses 18 to 22. Let's pray. Yeah, Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for what we can learn uh, from it and how it can shape, change and transform uh, our lives. Father, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit, would you speak to us now? Uh, would you lead us uh, as we as we look at your word, whether that's now or whether that's later in the day? Speak to us through your word, we pray in your name. Amen. So let us look at uh, this passage then. So I'm going to read in the NIV, the New International Version uh, of the Bible. Uh, just a reminder, it's Mark 2, uh, verses 18 uh, to 22. Let's read together. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. So John's disciples being those that were following John the Baptist. Some people came and asked Jesus, how is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Meaning the 12 that were Jesus' disciples weren't fasting. Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot. So long as they have him with them, but the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. So the bridegroom being Jesus. Uh, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, so something new onto an old garment. If he does, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wine skins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. No, he pours new wine into new wine skins. So there's quite a lot uh, in this passage here, and there's kind of two kind of parts to it. Um, but it all starts off in this conversation about fasting. And you know, fasting, I guess, we, we really think of as, you know, it is, it's a spiritual discipline, and but I feel like it's something that we, we often as Christians don't really do. And, you know, certainly in, in the Old Testament, there was one day fasting a year, the Day of Atonement, when the high priest would go into the most holy place and would uh, hear, listen to God and go into his presence uh, and God would speak. And that was, I guess, it's that idea of seeking, uh, you know, the presence of God had been, was being sought in the most holy place. Uh, and fasting involved kind of, you know, not eating, not doing your know, normal things. It was like another Sabbath as well. Um, uh, and you would just, you know, stop yourself having any other sort of pleasures or nice things to do. And it would just focus uh, your day, uh, focus that time on God, nothing else to distract you. And in the, in the New Testament here, you know, Jesus is, is not against fasting at all. What he's saying here is, you know, I'm the bridegroom, I'm what you all, you know, you come to feast, you know, at a wedding, you don't go to a wedding and say, oh, sorry, I'm fasting, I'll, 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 I'll eat tomorrow. No, at a wedding, you, you feast, you, you have the meal or the meals um, with the, the bridegroom and the bride because they are there, you're celebrating with them. Uh, and then if you, you know, if you want to fast, you, you do it the day after, wouldn't you? You do it the day before. And that's what Jesus is saying, you know, I'm here, I'm with you now, you're going to celebrate with me, you're going to, you are with me, you don't have to be seeking my presence because you're in my presence, so there's no need to fast. But he says uh, in, in verse 20, but a time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, so when Jesus goes back to heaven after his death and resurrection, and on that day they will fast. Because that purpose of fasting is to seek out the presence uh, of God. And I don't know about you, but uh, fasting is something I didn't really do until maybe a few years ago. 
um, and it's not a spiritual discipline I'd really practice loads uh, but I've, I've got so much from it just you know spending most of the day you don't have uh, the food that you would normally have uh, and spending that more time in prayer uh, I like to go on like a, a kind of a walk just to focus myself uh, particularly for Church in the Marsh and around the Marsh area uh, and that's just the way I want to do it uh, and then at other points through the day where you obviously start you feel your hunger um, and it does focus your mind and make you think oh I need to be focusing on God today you end up saying those other little prayers that, uh, in the day and it is just a day that's supposed to be more focused on God I guess a lot of us might not be able to give a full whole day uh, of, of focus on God um, because we might be fasting during a work day week we might have families uh, and stuff as well and that's absolutely fine fasting it is there's no set rules in it the idea of it is just that you find some way to to focus more on god and to seek after his presence you might choose to do that if you've got a big decision coming up um, or we made it out as a church and we've got some big things to think about um, you might do it on a weekly basis uh, you might do it just from one meal you might do it from stopping and watching tv or not going on social media or anything else you want to do it's just about spending that time with God uh, and certainly from personal experience it is something that I find has been really useful really beneficial uh, for me to hear God and know his voice uh, and also just to spend that more focused time or more time certainly uh, in prayer for specific purposes uh, or just in general for my walk with him uh, so can I encourage you guys to fast uh, and to seek his his presence uh, it's not about making a show of it either. I'm just telling you purely because I want to tell you what it's like to do it and, and what it involves. I'm not certainly not bragging about it at all. You know, Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 to it should be a secret act that it's between you and God. You fast when you want to. You don't have to shout it from the rooftops. I'm just telling you because I want to uh, explain what it looks like for me. Um, but it needs to be your personal choice. It needs to be because you want to do it, not because it's a, a command like the Pharisees were doing it because... Well, they just thought, well, we've got to do it, so I'll do it, and I'll look all holy in front of everyone else. That's not what it should be about at all. Uh, and linked to that, you know, Jesus is saying as well, you know, I'm not putting something new on top of the old and just trying to cover a crack that is in uh, God's Old Testament law. Uh, he says here at the end, you know, he he put no, he pours new wine into new wine skin. You know, Jesus was bringing something new. It was a new way. Uh, it is the gospel way, um, uh, and the gospel way is that there is no rules on fasting. There is no rules on how you do it, when you do it, if you do it. It is just there as a spiritual discipline that will help you in your walk and will help you uh, just to focus your mind on Christ and to, to seek after his presence. Uh, you can choose to, to have that time of fasting in your life or not. Um, but certainly I've really known it to be beneficial and I know many others have too. Um, so why don't, why, don't you try, why don't you try fasting uh, and just see if that, does make a difference to your prayer life, to your to your walk with God as you seek after him uh, and his presence. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that we can at any time, anywhere, pray to you and listen to you and focus on you, Lord. But I thank you, Lord, that you gave us this spiritual discipline, this idea of fasting, um, of putting away other things that maybe give us pleasure uh, and that we enjoy so that we can give a greater focus uh, to you in our day. Lord, I pray that uh, myself and others who, who fast, and maybe those that are going to try fasting, uh, Lord, that they might also find uh, that great joy uh, in fasting, Lord, and that focus uh, on you, and that you might speak to us through these times of fasting that we have, uh, maybe about our lives, maybe about our churches, um, uh, in our walks with you, Lord Jesus. Would you challenge us in them? Uh, would you encourage us in them? Uh, Lord, would you just come in power, uh, in those times, Lord Jesus, uh, and there'll be times to really uh, draw us closer uh, to you and that they would never become about us. They would always be uh, about you uh, and that, if anything, they would make us more humble um, rather than making us prideful for, for fasting in the first place, Lord Jesus. So speak to us, we ask, Lord Jesus. Lord, would you use fasting uh, for your kingdom's sake and for your glory's sake as we seek out your presence. Lord, would you just be with us as we go into this day and into this week. Just draw near to us by your presence, uh, overwhelm us with your power uh, and lead us uh, into all things that you have for us in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Try fasting, guys. 
see at the joy uh, and the power that it brings into your life uh, as you just spend more time in the amazing presence uh, of God. It is incredible, guys. So seek after him uh, and just see what he can do. See what he will say. Uh, see how he will move. Let's fast, guys. God bless.